how to prepare for data analytic interview. So whenever we are thinking about data analytics, so we first, uh, we are able to remember Power BI. And uh, we are able to see this kind of beautiful dashboards. I think majority of the people feels that, hey, I'm learning Power BI. I'm able to create this kind of beautiful dashboards. I'm more likely to be a data analyst. So now let's understand, for example, creating this Power BI dashboards is one of the very important skill set. I'm not saying uh, without this, you cannot crack data analytic interviews. But before preparing for data analytic, there are various elements which someone need to know. For example, like uh, I want to prepare for a data analytic interview. What exactly you need to have or what, what are the skill set you need to maintain? So for that, the very first skill set everyone need to learn we are able to say we need to have a knowledge about Python. So why someone need to have a knowledge about Python is to perform two major operations. One to perform EDA, next to perform ETL operations. So like what is meant by ETL operation? So like for example, there is a website, you are able to collect the data, you are able to transform the data, means like you are trying to clean the data and then you are trying to load the data. So in order to perform that operations, you need to have a very good amount of knowledge on Python. So like what is meant by EDA is, if someone provided you with a data set, so you need to be in a position to analyze the data, the basic analysis, or we can say the basic statistics, like understanding the mean, median. For example, if you are able to go to your Power BI, you need to be in a position to understand why, to, why, you, why you are taking some or why you are trying to go with an average. So you need to be in a position to when to use mean, when to use median, when to use your standard deviation, when to use your variance, what is an outlier or what is an anomaly detection. So to understand all that, yes, you need to have the knowledge about your uh, Python, which uh, I'm able to call it as EDA, so exploratory data analysis. So you need to have Python knowledge to perform EDA and to perform ETO, so like your collecting the data, you're cleaning that, and you're loading that into Power BI. So once you are performing you by using Python, plus you can use Power BI. So now this is a skill. Set. So first you need to have a Python. And the next one, in order to store the data, means you need to store the data in a particular format, means like Whenever you're working into your data analysis, most of the time you are trying to spend time on structured data or a relational data. So where someone need to store this relational data, in order to store all that relational data, you need to have a knowledge about SQL. So whenever you're preparing for any data analytic interviews, they try to ask you questions related to, man, there is a requirement you need to retrieve the data. So in SQL, you majorly have DDL, data definition language, you got data manipulation language and you got your data, for example, retrieval language. So now what exactly you need to, so majority of your data analytic interview questions come from retrieval language. What is meant by retrieval? You are able to store the data. You are able to add the data, insert the data, delete the data, manipulation, and you want to retrieve the data. I want to see top 10 customers or you want to import top 10 uh, locational data into Power BI. So in order, instead of importing all the data into your Power BI, you can write an SQL query based on the requirement you can import it. So for all that reason, you need to have a very good amount of knowledge on SQL. So now based on this, you will be getting a lot of interview questions. I'm writing it as IQ. You get a lot of interview questions based on data retrieval language. They ask you, hey man, identify the top 10 customer or top 10 countries or top 10 states or like you want to identify the departments with the least amount of uh, performance rating, or you want to identify a state with the least amount of sales and a huge amount of expenses. So to perform all that, you need to have a knowledge about data retrieval. So what you can do, you can prepare this data retrieval related questions using HackerRank or using your lead code. So by using HackerRank or by using lead code, various coding challenges platform we have it, you can just practice this uh, data retrieval based interview questions on SQL. That is something very important. So first Python, second SQL. And the third thing, so you need to have a knowledge about advanced Excel. You need to have the knowledge about advanced Excel. Why you need to have a knowledge about advanced Excel? So you, we are able to perform EDA, ETL using Python and Power BI. So we can store the data using Excel. 
So like this two works, we are able to perform and your data is very huge or working in a very big company. I think these two tools are needed. For example, there are companies, for example, take an insurance company or take a telecom company. Still, they are at Excel stages. There are various banking companies, still they use Excel. So for that reason, you can perform both data analysis, we can say, and we are able to perform ETL operations in Excel itself. So we are able to perform all both the operations, EDA plus CTL operations in Excel. So what we can do, you need to have a knowledge about pivot tables within Excel. You can know about data analysis toolkit. We have it in Excel. You can learn about macros within Excel. You can uh, focus more on your various functions. We have various functions in Excel. You can focus on it. Like you can focus on VLOOKUP. HLOOKUP, XLOOKUP, you can focus on if statements, all this kind of various functions within Excel, you are able to target it. So advanced Excel knowledge is important. And uh, the fourth one, which you need to master, apart from Python, SQL, advanced Excel, I think you, I already gave it Power BI. So you need to have a very good amount of knowledge on Power BI or Tableau, any data visualization tool. You need to have it. So if you are able to prepare this for, so like Python, SQL, Advanced Excel, Power BI and Tableau. So on Power BI and Tableau, what type of interview questions they ask it? Apart from it, if you can master, you can master one ETL tool. So already you are mastering one ETL tool, which is a Python. Even you can do a bit of ETL using Power BI within Power Query. You have a platform called Power Query. So by using Power Query, even you can do ETL. Or if you want, you can learn another tool, which is called as Altrix. So Altrix is called as a ETL tool. So in order to collect the data, to clean the data, so like to perform all that operations, you can learn any one ETL tool, Altrix. This is not mandatory. This is optional. It's going to be an advantage. Now, all right, Kant, I'm learning Power BI. What I need to learn in Power BI? Whenever you are able to go to your uh, data analytics, what people feel. So I'm creating this uh, dashboards. I want to more likely be a data list but that's not the case in the interviews what they will be focusing is they will be asking the question like why you used your sum of quantity so they are asking the question why so why you collected this kpi called as sum of quantity so why you collected this uh, kpi called as sum of profit why you collected the kpi called as sum of sales so why you collected total sales with respect to the month why you are trying to analyze it so they are trying to ask you the questions related to why so here why they are going with a question called as why the major reason behind going with why is to test your analytical thinking ability so like the interviewer want to test your analytical thinking so if you are able to take this particular data or if you are able to take this you have uh, a huge amount of data if I just uh, click on this drop down, you are able to see there's a huge amount of data here. So if you are having like uh, 20 columns, why you plotted only 10 columns? So there are like 20 columns. Why you plotted only this 10 columns? They're going to ask you. So how you selected this 10 columns are important to demonstrate it in a dashboard. So they are more curious to check about your analytical thinking ability. So they are primary reason behind every dashboard is analytical thinking. So, all right, you created this particular dashboard. So, what is the value you created with this dashboard? That is another interview question they're going to ask it. Okay, you created this dashboard. What is the kind of value? I'm calling it as a dollar or I'm calling it as a financial saving. What is an amount of financial savings you added to the client? So, that is something very important. So, whenever you place any project in your resume, you need to explain the value or you need to explain the uh, financial gain, you helped it to the companies. So when you are preparing, you need to prepare analytical thinking. So why you collected that sales or why you used sum of sales, why not mean sales or why not median sales? So all this explanation you want to do it. So how you collected the data, what type of ETL you have done and how, what type of dashboard you created. And once you created a dashboard, how you communicated that to the client. So this entire pipeline, is very important whenever you are preparing for your data analytic interviews. Majority of the people miss this flow. So they, 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 they just explain about creating a dashboard. Just creating a dashboard may not help you to flourish in your data analytic interview. Your entire data analytic interview needs to have a plan of what is the business problem? 
So based on the business problem, so how you collected the data? So after collecting the data, what is the type of ETL you performed? And after the ETL operation, how you created a dashboard? And after creating a dashboard, how you communicated that to the client? I'm calling it as CC. How you communicated that with the client? So these steps are very important whenever you are going to your data analytic interview. So keep this point in the brain. So now, all right, so like I prepared about analytical thinking and all this. So what is the major outcome of this dashboard is very simple. Creating a dashboard, if you go and spend one hour, you can just build a beautiful dashboard. Then what is the major outcome or what is the major uh, reason behind creating a dashboard is for finding the insights. So what is the requirement for finding the insights or we are able to say for finding the patterns so what is meant by finding insights or finding the patterns is so now this is a dashboard so which comprises of sales profits quantity so we are creating a dashboard with sales versus uh, monthly sales we are understanding uh, monthly profits monthly expenses we are understanding sales with respect to subcategory we are understanding sales with respect to customers we are understanding sales profits with respect to product why so to understand the patterns so by understanding the patterns or by understanding the insights, by applying that to the future business, okay, I get to know these are my top products, these are my top subcategories, and these are my top customers. And these customers are buying more sales in this month. So what I do, I increase my marketing budget or I try to go with a good product which these customers are more likely to buy. So by understanding the patterns, the company is able to make a proper decision so they are able to get a huge amount of business growth. For that reason, we are creating a dashboard. So if your dashboard is beautiful but it doesn't contain the patterns, it doesn't make any sense. So the interviewer is going to test the same thing. Okay, this person created a dashboard. So now whatever he is explaining, he is he explaining or is he conveying the patterns? or he's just conveying a simple beautiful dashboard. If it is simple beautiful dashboard, there is no point you can crack your interviews. So every dashboard need to contain a pattern, it need to contain a proper insight. So for that reason, what I personally suggest you and based on various, most of my learners, so I give the same uh, means like the tip. So whenever you are explaining any dashboard, your dashboard need to contain a value. If it is able to contain a value, yes you are more likely you can impress the interviewer. And one more thing, whenever you are going to data analytic or uh, mostly data analytic, so preparing this, is it sufficient? Yes. So just by preparing this, you are able to crack interviews. But what is happening is the companies are slowly migrating towards data analytic and data science. What is uh, What exactly uh, what I mean is, so now majority of the companies are saying data analytic and they are giving data science roles. And they are asking data science and uh, some people are looking for data science tools and they are giving a title data analyst. So the very simple difference in a data analysis, you'll be having SQL, Python, advanced Excel and all this. In a data science, you'll be having one additional skill set, which I'm calling it as machine learning. So I'm writing ML. So machine learning or predictive analytics. So in order to perform predictive analytic forecasting, clustering, all this, yes, you need to have a knowledge about machine learning. That's the reason all our analytical tools are coming up with our, if you go to this particular one. So now, for example, I want to create, uh, is there any plot I created? For example, here, see this, I could, this is a cluster. So clustering is a concept of machine learning. So which is uh, unsupervised learning, K means clustering. So by going with a clustering, we call market segmentation. It is a concept of machine learning. So now, again, within your Power BI, you got forecasting. If you plot any line plot, you are able to perform forecasting. Now, forecasting is a concept of machine learning. So now, whenever you are trying to prepare for data analytic role, if you can high, if you can touch a bit of data science, a bit of machine learning, that going to create more opportunities uh, or you are able to get more interview calls and you are more likely to clear your interview. So I'm not saying data science or machine learning is mandatory. But for a safer side, for the future like 2024, if the market is changing, to be in a safer side, if you can prepare a bit of data science, a bit of machine learning, that going to help you for your future. So this is the overall plan. So whenever you're preparing for data analytics, make sure you are trying to explain the patterns. You are not just explaining a dashboard, you are explaining the patterns. 
So you need to explain the journey towards how you are able to identify the patterns. Your journey shouldn't be about uh, what plot you used, what color you used. It's more about the patterns. So uh, what type of patterns you are able to grab? But if there are 20 columns, why you selected this 10 columns? That is something very important. And apart from it, so try to master this particular things. So something like uh, your Python, Power BI, SQL, and all this. So what I personally suggest is instead of learn all these things uh, individually, learn Python, learn SQL, learn Excel, and all this, if possible, try to merge all this and work on one project that going to help you uh, to explain that to an interviewer that creates a positive impact with your interviewer so like try to prepare this so like i'll be coming up with few interview questions on sql on power bi so they're going to be some uh, interview questions like scenario so what are scenario based questions they may ask you hey you are working with a marketing agency and you are trying to work towards reducing their marketing budget and increasing their performance. What would be your approach? So this kind of scenario based questions they're going to ask you. So how to answer all this, I will be touching them in data analytic interview preparation. So this is the first one. So how to speak or how to prepare in your data analytic interviews. So how to speak in your data analytic interview, I'll be covering on the next lecture. So if you like this content, please uh, like it share it and please do subscribe to my youtube channel thank you so much